Hey everybody, this is Pat with High Level Freaks, and today we are going to do a quick tutorial on how you can validate your contacts and make sure their number is textable or non-textable, or maybe even fake if they've given you a fake phone number. So uh, it's going to use one simple little automation inside High Level and leverage a third-party service, which is virtually free. We're talking less than half a cent per contact validation. And so it's really simple. It's very easy to implement. And we'll have the link in the description uh, below. And then you can go and get the little micro snapshot we're going to have available for you. And you can implement it for yourself and for your clients. So before we do that, make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel, like us, give us a comment, share this video with your friends, share it with your enemies, share it with everybody. And uh, that way you can help us grow the channel and we can bring you more good content. <clears throat> so let's dive in. Okay, so first, why would we want to validate contacts, right? So in high level, they already have something like this built in. Let me show you what we've got here. So they've got this option in the business settings and it says validate phone numbers when the first SMS is sent to a new contact. Well, what if we want to validate it before we send an SMS? Because I don't want to try to send an SMS and have an error out and then, you know, have that count against an account. Because let's say you import a big list of contacts for your client and you're going to be doing, let's say, a database activation or database reactivation campaign. You might want to scrub that list to make sure, first of all, that you can text those people and there's not just a bunch of landlines. Because if you start texting a bunch of people and start getting a whole bunch of errors, you may get your account suspended for you know a little period of time uh, by Twilio or by LC Phone, right? So we want to make sure that you're not doing that. And so the uh, the best way to do this, or the best way to keep your your account safe, is to validate your contacts before you send any kind of um, uh, text messages at all. Okay, because. You know, you just don't want to do it. So let's show you over here. Like here's an example where a guy booked an appointment and he booked with a landline. Now in my forms, I always have, you know, the placeholder is your best cell phone number. People still put in their business number or a landline or whatever. And now you can see that there you go. The phone number can't receive SMS. It's a landline. So I don't like getting errors like that. So what I did is I actually went through with my little, uh, automation and I validated all of my contacts okay and you can see here like let's say uh, this particular contact here I'm gonna go over here and you can see that he is textable okay so that guy is textable um, let's see this guy up here that um, let's let me close that link there and the guy that booked the appointment with the landline you can see where it says textable no show also here's another good point uh, if they're not getting text uh, updates on their, their uh, appointment reminders and things like that, I find that my show rate drops a lot or is almost non-existent for people who put in a landline because they're not getting text updates. We're sending them emails, but they're not getting the texts and everybody reads text messages. So one thing we might want to do with our automation later on uh, when we go through the process is if it is a non-textable number, you could send them an email asking them for a textable phone number, right? So that's what, uh, that's what you, you know, one reason why you want to have your uh, contacts validated and, uh, you know, know whether you can text them or not, right? So let's dive into the service that we're going to be using. It's called Phone Validator, and they've got a bunch of other really cool services uh, like reverse lookups and people finders and things like that. Really cool stuff that you could wire into high level to pull back contact details and stuff. So we're not going to go into that. We might do a tutorial on that later. But for now, Phone Validator is a super fast, super cheap service. I mean, it, it costs you like four tenths of a penny for every validation. And they have an API, which means from high level, we can do a web hook, send the data out and get responses back that says, yes, the phone's good or yes, it's bad or no, it's bad, whatever, that sort of thing. So it's very, very simple to implement. So uh, here's my account here. And I'll show you just how much it cost me to do 60 validations. And it literally happened in like under a minute. And so you can you can basically select all of your contacts, run them through the automation. And then within a, a minute or two, you'll know exactly how many you can text and that sort of thing. So I have 60 contacts in my database. 
And so each one of them costs 0 0.004. So, you know, if you're doing a little math along with me, if I go 60 times 0 0.004, that is 24 cents. So I spent less than a quarter to validate all those contacts. So let's say if you're, you know, um, I don't know, let's say if you have a client that has a database reactivation campaign of say 1,000 people, right? And 0 0.004, it's gonna cost you a whopping $4 to uh, validate those contacts and make sure that you are only going to be contacting people that have uh, cell phone numbers that can be texted. So that's definitely a good thing right there. So you can add that onto your service. Just, yeah, yeah. Hey, Mr. Client, it's going to cost you an extra four bucks, right? So let's look and see what this automation actually looks like. So I'm in the uh, the tutorial snapshot here. You're, again, you'll be able to download this. It's gonna be in the description and uh, you just opt in. You can get the snapshot and the automation is built for you. It's super, super simple. It's got one custom value and one automation. So first let's go and look at what the custom value should be. So in here, it's going to be uh, the phone validator API key. So when you sign up for phone validator, let's go back up here like this. And uh, what you're going to want to do is you'll want to sign up, um, put in, I don't know, like 10 bucks. I, I always just put in 10 bucks because I mean, I, 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 I almost never go through it. Um, we've got other accounts that actually uh, we send enough text messages that we might, you know, top off like twice a week. But that's a lot of messages that we're sending. But with this one here, uh, you can top off about $10. You can actually, uh, you know, do a, an auto refill and it's really, really simple. Um, so once you do this and you, you sign up, they're going to give you an API key that will be in this, um, in this particular uh, account. So all the way up at the top like this, you'll be able to actually get your API key. And that's what you're going to put into the custom value right here. That's all you really got to do. The automation is built for you. Um, I'm going to walk you through it to show you just how easy it is. And here is the logic. Now you can always expand on this. Like I said, if the phone number comes back fake or uh, not textable, then you can always send a quick email saying, hey, we, we tried to text you and we weren't able to. Could you please uh, fill out this quick form to update your phone number. You could send them to an, an online form and they could update the phone and poof, then you're getting, you know, valid phone numbers, right? So this is the valid, uh, the phone validator automation. I actually do it, uh, I set it up for the trigger is when the contact is created, but then you could always go back through and send somebody back through the system and, uh, you know, validate their phone numbers. So as soon as the contact is created, we go through just in case we remove tags um, and then we go to uh, see if we have the phone number. So let's say if you added a contact and you didn't have an, uh, the phone number and it just had an email, they're literally going to drop out right here and then just the, the workflow ends. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna send through uh, the contacts in a drip feed. So uh, with phone validator, they have what's called rate limiting on their API, which is 25 contacts per second. So what I'm doing in high level is I'm using their drip feature to make sure I don't overload my API calls and get a bunch of errors. So I'm sending through 25 contacts every two seconds. So uh, 25 contacts every 0 0.03 minutes. So that's every two seconds. And so when you, you can bulk add people into this workflow and they just kind of just drip in at the right at the right rate, right? And so you will eventually get through your entire list. The next thing is this big deal here. I'm actually sending a, a webhook. We're using a high level custom webhook and this is all set up with the proper link and everything, but we're passing in our API key that's in the custom value. We're typing in uh, the basic validation and then the phone, uh, the, the uh, contacts phone number, right? And so when you do that, you're gonna get this response back and this I sent through my cell phone number and you can tell that it's not fake and it's a valid number and it's textable and everything like that. And so the line type is cell phone. So you're gonna <clears throat> you're gonna get the uh, several responses back based on the line type. You can have cell phone, landline, VoIP, or which is voice over IP or fake, okay? So those are the four responses you can get back. 
So the first thing we want to do when we get our response back from phone validator is we want to see, is the number fake? We're already checking the, the, the content here. And so if the uh, it says fake number is no, then we're going to go over this way down to see if it's textable. If it is fake, we're going to go over here and I'll explain this little tree in just a second. But <clears throat> if it's not fake, we're going to go over here and we're going to check to see if the line type is cell phone or VoIP. Now you might want to remove uh, voice over IP out of here and only do cell phones. I don't really have a problem with it because, um, you know, if you're if you're thinking about it, uh, you know, high level gives us textable toll free numbers. So it could be a voice over IP number and I would be able to actually text that phone number technically. So uh, if if you are working with just regular people, like if you're doing a database reactivation to just normal everyday people, most people are not going to have a VoIP. They're going to have a cell phone. So you could just, you know, pick which option you want to use here. But I use both. So if it's cell phone or voice over IP, I say yes. And then I add the tag that it is textable. Uh, if it isn't textable at all, then what I do is I add the textable no tag, and then I actually set it to DND. I enable DND for the SMS channel. So what that does is that the next time when I actually launch my database reactivation and I start sending people through the process, if that contact goes through with the uh, where uh, SMS is disabled for that person, then guess what? they're not going to get anything in that workflow. Uh, they might get emails if you have emails in there, but they won't be texted. So that's a very, very easy way to get everybody filtered and make sure your phone list is nice and squeaky clean and you don't get any errors. So uh, then you could, you know, what you could do if you wanted is you could go back to the contacts and create smart lists for people that are textable, people that are not textable. And if you ever wanted to remove the non-textable people, just do the quick, uh, you know, like a, the the uh, quick list in contacts and nuke the non-textable people. So that is it, guys. That is the uh, the quick tutorial. That's the fastest tutorial we've done in a long time. Uh, like I said, the uh, link is in the description if you want to get the little snapshot that you'll get this entire workflow here. Um, and that's it for the snapshot. So it's very easy to implement for your clients. Just load it into your client's uh, snapshot or their locations loaded into yours, you know, that sort of thing. And then you can actually uh, provide your validation services along with the database reactivations or just generally anything else. All right. So that's it. Enjoy. Have a good day.